This week on Your 4x4, Danny and I have a very special overseas four-wheel drive treat for you. We start off in Kuala Lumpur, checking out the local four-wheel drive scene. We visit a typical 4x4 workshop, and then we sample all of the action of a jungle 4x4 experience. So let's get set to get wet in the Malaysian jungle. Your 4x4 is proudly partnered by Berma Diesel Service, ARB 4x4 Accessories, Piranha Off-Road Products, Kama Rear End Accessories and Black Widow Storage Solutions. Hi, I'm Dave Stewart. I live in Malaysia. We're down here at one of the local workshops, getting our trucks fixed before we venture out once again. Putting my jungle sneakers back on and getting three new shocks put on, or four actually. Most of the vehicles here we run either a rather large diesel, usually around 3 litres being large compared to Australia. We run Cymex XT tyres normally, normally about 35s, but the guys who run portal axles generally run 36s with a 1J Toyota engine or a 2J Toyota engine or a 15BT diesel. On the Land Cruiser 2s we generally run 35 inch tyres because the axles won't take it, neither will the gearbox. When you've got to pick up a 45 kilo tyre that's enough in the jungle, okay? For those of you who have never seen a Land Cruiser 2, this is basically a four door Bandera. You all know them as the little short wheelbase Land Cruiser. Well, over here we have its big brother, the four door. They come with a 2.4 litre petrol or a 2.2 or 2.4 litre diesel which most of us throw away. This one started out life as a 2.4 petrol. It's now got a modified 13BT stuck in it with 14BT running gear, turbo and a few other things to make it fair fly. But also runs 21 pounds of boost just to get the diesel heads running a bit. On our days off we come down to the workshop, work on the trucks and as Simon's just seen we had a bit of fun with a truck we bought off a customer for 200 ringgit. We took it out the back and trashed it. We will sit here, spend most of the day here playing with the vehicles, do work ourselves. They don't seem to mind us working on our trucks, they're still billers, it doesn't matter. And it's also good for us to work on our own trucks. Can't work on them at home because my neighbour calls the police. <laughs> and then he calls the council and then he calls the health department. So come down to the workshop and do my work here. The other vehicle you will see here is a 80 series or commonly known as the Ninja. They're generally used as touring wagons. They are way, way, way too heavy for the jungle. It'll weigh empty what this will weigh fully loaded. So way too heavy. Log bridges and super soft mud holes, forget it. Nothing can pull them out. The other vehicle you'll see is a modified Pajero. I won't say anything good or bad about it, but the independent front suspension certainly lets them down when the going gets really, really tough. The other thing you will see is XJ Jeeps, the old Cherokee, 2.4 litre and 4.0 litre. And they're usually lifted, modified, got everything stuck on them. The other one you'll see here is the pickups. All the pickups are 2.5 litre. They've all got lift kits and stuff stuck in them. This is a rock star. It's got a Land Cruiser 2 live axle on the front with spring, so it's been converted from leaf to spring. It's running a Pajero rear axle, converted from leaf to coil, I think, and it's running a Nissan 2 litre petrol engine, and it's about to get a 4.4 litre Nissan V8 petrol stuck in it. And it's running a normal PTO winch with our local winch hookup here, and 
fluffy toy. That's not normal, by the way. This is also the same as mine. It's got air activation for the PTO lever. Sit in the cab, everything in the cab. The winchy just runs away with the cable, hooks it up to the tree or whatever, the anchor point, thumbs up, then you go with a PTO lever and you're off. No jumping out of the vehicle, okay? The winch in my toy, this is the Toyota equivalent. It runs electric one side, a la 8274, and on the other side is a PTO. It runs at about three and a half thousand kilos, and we fixed the shear pin problem. We've actually welded up the shear pin. It will no longer break, okay? The winch cable or the universal joints will give out first. But the electric is awesome. It will just pull. It'll belly drag this thing till it breaks. Had this winch three years. I've never maintained it. That's how good it is. <laughs> and I'm proud of that. <laughs> All we've ever done is grease the shaft. <laughs> We're about to rebuild the motor because we have to, but awesome winch. Don't worry about it. It's in vehicle control as well. We've wired it up so it's in the dash for the electric, just in and out. There's no cables anywhere else. It's also got air activation down the bottom here. For the free spool, it's in and out, running off a compressor, and that's about it, so it's pretty good. Some of you are probably looking at the state of these vehicles and going, my god, what are these? These are jungle trucks. We don't have touring trucks. If you have a touring truck, you set it up like that ninja over there and you never take it off-road. It stays that way. It's 35-inch tyres, as high as you can get it. As big a winch as you can put on it, and you don't worry about the bodywork because you're going to smash it up, whether you want to or not. Something's going to happen. Bamboo, trees, logs, roots, log bridges, everything's going to go through it. So we have nothing on top. Most of us, you'll see, have nothing on the roof. Clean, bare, so even the spotlights are tiny. So bamboo, everything just goes straight over the top. I've been here six years. We do adventure four-wheel driving, jungle camping, jungle trekking, waterfall trips. I also run river boarding, which is down white water, face first on a little plastic board, about half the size of a surfboard. We also do adventure fishing, where we hunt for the Malaysian snakehead. And we also do blue water fishing, we do sailfish fishing. And if there is marlin and someone happens to land one or hook one up, then we have marlins here as well. We also run charity trips to the jungle. We take food and clothing and stuff when we have to into the Aborigines here. It's something that most four-wheel drive guys do. For more information, check out Four-Wheel Drive TV's website. I'm sure they'll pop a little link up there and some information for you. Come over and try it. It's definitely different to the outback touring in Australia. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to take Simon and Danny out for their first sample of the Malaysian jungle. I hope they enjoy it, and I don't think they've got any idea what they're in for but they'll certainly find out tomorrow because we may even give Simon a drive. Where's the limit set? <laughs> Seven and a half? Yeah, two. <laughs> and we'll let these guys have a sample of the mud, the water, the waterfalls, and a general view of how Malaysian four-wheel driving is. Until tomorrow morning, we'll see you then. See you in the jungle tomorrow. When you're off-road, who's backing you up? Boasting class-leading form and function, Kmar rear bars are world-renowned. Fully Australian-made and owned, Kmar's range of 4x4 enhancements and accessories are designed to be outback tough. For more information, visit www.kmar.com.au. Kmar rear bars, wheel carriers and more, who's protecting your rear end? Piranha Off-Road has been leading the way with Aussie four-wheel drive gear for over 20 years. With class-leading products like the innovative power shower, intelligent dual battery kits and their legendary headlight upgrade looms. Piranha has Australia's broadest range of practical and affordable gear. Whether you're a tourer, weekender or a four-wheel drive competitor, Piranha products are problem solvers. We've got all the goodies. For more information, visit piranhaoffroad.com.au or call today on 9762-1200. Does your diesel smoke, lack power, or have poor fuel economy? Then you need the Berrima Diesel Treatment. Fine tuning diesels since 1956, the Berrima Diesel technicians are Australia's leading diesel wizards. From a turbo installation to a high tech dyno tune, when you think diesel, think Berrima Diesel. Visit thedieselexperts.com and make an appointment for more power, 
more torque and better fuel economy. Now in the back of my four wheel drive, I've got the same Black Widow draw system that you can win in the Black Widow email competition. All you need to do is email us in 50 words or less what your favorite Black Widow product is and why. Check the website for details and travel safely with Black Widow four wheel drive storage solutions. We picked up Simon and Danny this morning about 15 minutes late, about 8 o'clock and we headed north on the expressway about 65, 70 kilometres out of town and we're actually at the back of the Proton factory now up in the high country. First thing we met was a small river crossing and then a small creek crossing up a couple of boulders which we all seem to do in two wheel drive for some reason, not sure why. The first river we crossed takes us to the Terratac View Resort but this bit here is known to all of us as Tunja Mullum and it's the back of the Proton Factory, we all know where that is and I cannot remember the river name, <laughs> aren't I good? <laughs> Then there was the chicken track because we wanted to avoid the mud hole. It took us almost an hour to get through the chicken track. It would have been two hours through the mud hole, so. Then we went through the Volvo axle mud hole and I promptly got stuck. Already, we got the dip lock. <laughs> and then Simon had a bit of a drive and also got promptly stuck. So we winched ourselves out of there. Got to the end point of that track, turned around, came back, reverse very quickly, and then we came to this river crossing here, which is where the fun starts. And you have about two kilometres, and it's taken us almost two hours to get to the waterfall campsite at the top. We had a boulder, muddy creek. Uh, we had a few overheating problems with my truck. It blew its stack because the radiator was full of mud. This river, which we've just crossed and I've just pulled the Hilux out of, actually looks quite easy until you realize you've actually got to make a banana turn right throughout the river. We all know this river pretty well, so we actually tend not to walk it, but normally you would get out, walk both sides, put a thingy down, put a stick down in the water and see how deep it is. If it's flowing any faster than this, if you can't walk it, you can't drive it. That's the general rule. But even I may get caught out one of these days with a hidden hole here. I know that because I don't walk the river every time. All I do is I look at the water. I can see where the boulders are. With this particular crossing, what we also find is there is a lot of rocks hidden just below the surface. If you've got a pretty good eye, you can actually see the water disturbance. You can actually see where they are. You look for the little ripple that gives an indication there's something below pushing the water up usually that means a hidden rock but these rocks are not small as you can see they're bigger than your axle so you're going to get hooked up even getting out of this creek there's only one way out if your spotter hasn't done it before you're going to get stuck 
we've seen broken engine mounts, broken CV joints, everything in this little short, innocent looking river, but it's not. During monsoon, I don't think I'd want to cross it. It'd be pretty dangerous. We had a very narrow climb through a gully, which the Hilux almost drove, but I unfortunately am too low, I couldn't do it. And that was the point where Red finally decided to blow its stack about 1k from camp. And we got to the top of the last hill climb, basically ran down the hill to camp. Simon and Danny went waterfall exploring, where I think they found two waterfalls. A meeting point where two rivers meet on a beautiful Boulder River Creek. Very nice. And we had two minute noodles and black pepper chicken for lunch. Time to turn around because the thunderstorms are starting and time to go home. So we got a little 60k ride home, providing the radiators don't overheat. Danny and I had an amazing time in the Malaysian jungle, but hang around, there will be more action on that story coming up shortly. For now though, thanks to ARB and KMA, it's time for the Your 4x4 photo competition. Like all of our competitions, this is all about you and your 4x4, and it's easy to enter. Jump onto the website for the details. Let's now cross over to Danny to find out who the five nominations for this week are. Our first entry this week is a very cold looking GU Patrol. It is well set up with suspension tyres, bull bar, spotties, snorkel and more. This photo was taken in the Kosciuszko National Park. Our next entry was taken on a day trip around the town of 1770. It's a great looking 100 series with a nice lift, ARB bull bar, Kmart wheel carrier, spotties and UHF. Now this turbo diesel Hilux sure looks like it's having fun. Set up with old man emu suspension, all terrains, winch, spotties and snorkel, this photo was taken at the end of a dirty day near Cunningham's Gap. Next we have this very tidy discovery nicknamed Bruce. Bruce is having a day out on Fraser Island and has a 2 inch lift, ARB bull bar, snorkel, spotties and plenty more inside. Our final entry this week is this great looking Jeep Wrangler. It has ARB bars, front and rear lockers, a decent lift, muddies, winch and more. It sure looks ready to head out and hit the tracks. Thank you, Danny. So the first person to email in has won themselves a Kmar snatch strap, and the best photo for the entire series will win themselves an ARB fridge. Check the website for details.